Hey guys, it's me, Mr. 250, and welcome back to Sound of Drop Fall into Poison. So we last left off at the big decision here, which was uh, we can push Mari away and run or pull Mari close and protect her. Which, oh yeah, this is this is when that one girl started freaking out and the, the, something about concrete water or melted concrete. Uh, yeah, I thought that was weird. Anyway, we are going to choose, this is where we actually get a bad choice option. As you can tell by the red, uh, the red choices here. We are going to choose push Mari away and run. If at least Mari can get away. With that one thought, I push Mari away. Big sis! Even against the water resistance, Mari is swept further and further away. At the very least, she is able to get out of range of the whale's mouth. My relief is almost simultaneous. Yeah! What is that breed called? A lancefish, isn't it? A fish with a long, thin body and bearing sharp teeth. It has a ferocious desire for every type of prey in the deep sea. That fish is approaching Mari's neck. Even with the bit of distance between them, I can still clearly see that this is the situation. The lance fish closes in on Mari and slams into her, biting at least her neck, or biting at her neck. When its fangs sink in, red particles spurt out instead of blood. Showered in the particles that spurt out, it takes another bite further in. Just like that, her neck is swallowed up. Her body is severed from above the neck, the deep red particles scattering about as her head, which has now become Oliver, drips through the deep sea. I lock eyes with the head floating before me. I can't look away from her expressionless eyes. It's the end of the one I tried to protect. The extinguishment of her very existence. Death piled on death. Before I know it, the once violet room is dyed red. The world itself seems to be trying to change. But... From my head to my toes, I'm already swallowed up by the whale. Unable to see fate through to the end, I'm washed away by the torrent of a violent of a violent death. Congrats. You blew it. The final stage of destiny. Woo! been a while since we've gotten a bad end, hasn't it? I think we're going to be getting a few more this episode, but it just depends on how soon the next choice is. Alright, so we do need it to, in fact, go to with Pull Mari Close and Protect Her, as you might have imagined. Trying to protect Mari from the mouth that is after her, I reflexively hold her closer. Even if it means being her shield, I will protect her. It's not as if I can ever let her go. We finally got to see each other again. Finally, I can protect her. Just like that, I'm swallowed by the darkness. Are we dead? Oh, we're not dead. Excellent. All part of the plan, of course. When I come to, I'm standing where the waves are breaking. This is... I don't know. When I came to, I was here. It's quiet, but a gentle wind blows. Underneath the starry sky, we're in a fantastical world. You saw it, didn't you? That violet was my true nature. It's just like Papa. The form of a darkness that seems as if it will swallow everything. Right. I was swallowed up by that whale. With Mari. Where is she? She's fine. Sayo smiles. It's the first time I've seen her do it. That isn't the only poison I possess. Even though I should have told you, Mayumi, I couldn't. Huh? I really haven't grasped what's going on from the start. Am I dead? Is this the Sanzu River? But it's not a river. Ignoring me in the confusion, Sayo continues. I met Mari five years ago at Manton Aquarium, when she was alone. We were close in age, so I have a feeling that's why she quickly opened up to me. 
I was so proud. I wanted to show her the deep sea fish booth. Even though it was already closed down, there were creatures left as part of Papa's collection. But in the end, it was locked and we couldn't get in. As thanks for telling her about it, I received her keychain. I wondered if it was okay even though we couldn't see the booth, but I was happy. Ironically, I was able to ascertain that reason today. On that day, Mari hid somewhere after the aquarium closed. She waited until a time when all of the staff should have gone home. Because I was so proud of it, she probably wanted to see the deep sea fish booth. Moreover, that night, the door to the deep sea fish booth was open. You already know, at that time my papa was killed by the hands of those two. From there it went as Mari said. I could never tell you my own sin. I'm the worst, really awful. I clearly understand that I inherited my boastful nature from my father. My ego, my poison killed Mari. I should die just like Papa did. Mayu, you and Mari should erase this Red Mantin Aquarium. I'm counting on you. As usual, Sayo, Sayo says this flatly. I can feel a sense of unease in Sayo's story. Somewhere there's a warped sense of distance. Don't say it like that. Tell me how you really feel. I just told you. Then I'll say it, Sayo. I wanted to be your friend, so I kept quiet. Huh? You're mad, right? When you told Mari the truth, did she get mad? Did she resent you? Mari was swept up into a tragic fate, yet she still said she wanted to see me. She said she was happy she did get to see me. Her feelings are still pure and clean. That she died because of you. Mari doesn't think anything of the sort. That's why I don't blame you either. I don't think you should die. And on that note, Mari is thinking that she wants to save you, Sayo. I'm her big sister, so I know. Moreover, please don't talk about yourself dying anymore. Himeno entrusted this to me. I made the decision to abandon you once. Which is why I won't falter anymore. The starry sky twinkles, bathing us in a faint light. That's right, Mari, you're here, right? Yep. When I look over my shoulder, there's a small silhouette. And you're glowing? Mari is tinged with a transparent blue light. Her hair color is strange, almost sublime. Hehe. <laughs> Isn't it great? I don't know if I'd say great. Or cool. Right? Eh. Mari's whole face is in a smile, and she spins around once. With almost the same ease that her skirt flutters, the light enveloping Mari spreads throughout the whole room. The room illuminated in blue light gradually returns to its original form. It's the deep sea fish booth. N no, it's not the same. There's not one trace of the aggression that had swelled so high in the deep sea creatures up to a short time ago, and they swim about within the light. They resemble the fish who swam about without regard to the containment of the tunnel tank, but they are infinitely more free. It's the exact opposite of negative feelings such as hate or malice. Pancake octopi, football fish, or fish, brown jellies, and flower hat jellyfish, barrel eye, and chiro Toothies, Imperator, and there's a Dahlia anemone, as well as an inshore, hag inshore hagfish. Can to repeat all that? Sayo is following the fish with her eyes. Those eyes bear the purity that lives in Mari. Along the same lines, I'm also enjoying being surrounded by so many different creatures like this. They can be forgiven for their previous attacks. The creatures begin to gradually swim around Mari. Mari, what did you do? 
I became one with the fish. I prayed and made a wish that I want to protect my big sister. And you couldn't have done that while the fish was coming to munch in your throat? <laughs> Just like the director and the others. No, it's different. You don't have that sinister feeling. The only ones who do are those who make corrupt wishes. With this, we may be able to hold off that whale. On the other hand, we may also be able to destroy the Red Mantin Aquarium. Malice, hatred, anger... The imprisoned souls have been freed from these things. Look and you'll understand. It's different from one unified form following one giant will. All of them being touched by Mari's light. Their liberated souls are each cooperating. You could say it's numerous individuals responding as one community. We've received hope from an unexpected source. Mari, you're really amazing. I become happy and embrace Mari. But it doesn't work the way it did before. Even as I pitch forward, Mari's body gives no tactile resistance. And I fall to the floor. I reach out my hand for Mari's to try and stand up. But her fingers cannot touch. My eyes surely widen as Mari gazes at me with an intense look. Big sister, I understand as well. I exhale without thinking. Her serious expression is one I've never seen before. I realize she's grown up with within eternity itself. If you take care of the bad people, big sister, I'll disappear too because this aquarium itself will cease to exist. Yeah. If everyone gets eaten up by the big whale, it might not disappear, but I don't want to stay in such a scary place forever. What Saginaw Marieko and her cohort called a whale, that giant malevolent aggression is the means of closing off this world. I personally would not want to spend an eternity in such a place. More importantly than anything else, I refuse to let Mari be trapped. My precious little sister, she can't be saved if she can't go to heaven. I won't give up. Leave it to me, and you all go back to the real world where you can rest easy, big sister. What are you saying, Mari? We'll stand up to them. Together. I put my hand out in front of Mari. Huh, but big sister, you guys can't do anything, can you? We can be with you, even if it's just for a little longer. With the back of my hand facing up, I stretch my arm out towards Mari. And finally it seems she realizes what I'm trying to do. Mari also extends her hand, laying it with naturally no feeling to it over mine. Even with her hand giving off no body heat, I'm sure I can feel a warmth to it. Are you trying to leave me out? You want in, Sayo-chan? If you say so as well, Mari, but I'm fine. I haven't atoned just yet. If I don't at least say what I want to do, I can't go home. That seems so like you, Sayo. It's not bad, is it? Saying this, Sayo places her palm on top of Mari's hand. Oddly enough, as if it's if is it it's as if I can feel her skin. If this sensation is what we call individuality, then what they say is wrong. It's precisely because each individual can come together that we are strong. It's incomparable to just existing on survival instinct alone, having hatred and malice as one's driving force. One can't consume everything. Humans weren't born just to survive. We'll definitely do it. I'll protect the two of you. So you definitely need to make it home. Let's not have any regrets anymore. Mari, if you're protecting me, then I will support you. And definitely return to Himeno's side. I take a small breath and look up at the ceiling. Let's head for the other side of the truth. So I'm not I'm a little confused on what they're gonna do. 
other than that they're they're gonna they're gonna beat the bad guys here is all right as well taking the front entrance out of the deep sea fish booth we've arrived at the tunnel tank Mari is praying at the center of the room addressing the fish and living creatures the creatures do not respond verbally but the blue light emitting from Manton envelops them and just like at the deep sea fish booth they begin to swim around freely I wonder why the fish don't disappear since they're souls they should also be able to cross over because they're all Mari's companions. They've been under the influence of a heart of fear up until now, but having been moved by Mari's pure heart, it seems like they want to help her. The fish's emotions, huh? Think you could hand in a paper on that? Should I write that Mari is glowing or something? If I write such a paper, they won't let me into high school. <laughs> Big sister, you'll be a high school student soon. How cool! How cool! Mari is empathizing, emphasizing her point by jumping up and down. The ultramarine light that seems to be not of this world is making an imprint out of Mari. As Mari says this, I can't really seem to answer her. Big sister, are you in the same class as Sayo-chan? No, we go to different schools. I go to Mitsuba Junior High, close to home. What about you, Sayo? A girls' school in the city. It includes elementary, junior, and high school. It's near Manton. Well, since the high school's begun recruiting, why not try for it? Though the score you need is high. Sayo-chan, you want to be in the same class as my big sister. <sighs> that isn't necessary. It's, that's not what I mean. Stop picking on me, Baka. Sayo's face becomes red and she shouts at Mari. Mari has a mischievous smile on her face. She seems to be attached to Sayo. I'm not used to seeing the power dynamic between these two play out so clearly, but it's quite funny. Anyway, let's keep moving. We need to go around the aquarium to all the areas and make all the creatures Mari's allies, right? The fishes say that they'll help us, and spread my light, so we can leave it to them. We should go look for that man and the lady. Allies, eh? They're probably our most reliable option. But you know, if we don't hurry and find the man, no matter how I help them, they'll be taken over by the scary feelings again. Overwritten by the grudge, you mean? If so, we should return to the director's office. Yeah, that's right. I'll go in the front, because the others are following me for now. Big sister, you two. Think about what you want to say to the man and the lady. Mari says, pointing her fingers towards the way we came. When Mari spins to the side, the dust in the air reflects the glittering light. It's as if she's clad in blue specks of light. Mari's words weigh heavily on my chest. She has also probably realized it. This is the end. The man and the lady, and all of the imprisoned fish holes, even the big whale, I'll bring them all along, to the other side of that fuzzy world. I want to stay a human. This is what Mari's heart is screaming out. But I'm not sad. If I keep waiting the whole time, I'm sure I'll see you. At that time, I'll be an old lady. Will you recognize me? Big sister is an old lady. <laughs> How funny. If their ambitions come to pass, Mari will never be able to go to heaven, forever trapped within the cage of being a grudge. It sounds like a ridiculous story. Sayo, if you still have doubts, maybe you shouldn't push yourself. Sayo clicks her tongue, then continues. I don't want to accept it. I still have doubts. I also feel that I don't want Papa to disappear, but to be in imprisoned by a shapeless grudge, unable to be rescued. I pity him. Oh, whoops, I didn't read the rest of that. He's already dead, so at least let him be relieved by Mari's kindness. My true resolve is that no matter how terrible he was, 
I still accept him as his daughter. It's not wrong, is it? Going about it that way. Sayo smiles with the most relaxed expression I've ever seen her use. It's not the strained resolve she had when we met. The person who recklessly said she would throw away her life if it meant clearing up the truth is a different person. Like the time that Mari said she wanted to protect us. This is a pure wish. Mayumi, you should also probably be sure of your feelings. Even if this Hiyoshi guy is the real culprit who killed Mari, there's no need for him to die. If he can be saved, you should save him. If he's alive, he should have to atone for his sins. Sayo. I don't hate him or anything. He was scary, but I've already forgotten about him. My only wish is to protect you two. Parting isn't all there is. You two taught me that. That's why no matter what conclusion you reach, Mayumi, I've decided not to deny it. I still have things I want to know. Sayo turns to me with a serious look. I look Sayo directly in the eyes and continue. If I think about it, we still haven't heard the truth. We know why Saganuma Rieko planned to kill the director, but then why is Kinji San her accomplice? And what caused him to go mad? Since she saw the scene of the murder, they probably killed Mari to shut her up. Saganuma Rieko was probably killed as well being afraid to give herself up and hesitant to kill Mari. It's nothing more than a hunch, but I have the feeling it's right. Back when Kinji-san attacked me, he tried to trick me by pretending to attack Saganuma Rieko instead. His threatening attitude wasn't normal. Even though I can't think of it as something a human would do, he did it. One more thing. Saganuma Rieko. Sayo looks at me with a mysterious expression. Do you have some connection to her, Mayumi? Why did she keep her, Mari, around at that time? After a moment of silence passes, I clap both of my hands together. Without knowing the truth, I can't reach a conclusion. So we should get going. I'm sure the night of the full moon will be over soon. For Mari and for everyone in the aquarium, we cannot fail, no matter what. Right. With Mari's cheerful reply, she stands in front of us and begins walking, just, just, just as she had said. As I start to follow behind her, her, her form cloaked in light, Sayo pulls me back by the hem of my shirt. It's unexpected and a little surprising. Listen to me for a moment. Huh? What is it? Once we return to the real world, I probably will be too embarrassed to say this, so I'll say it now. Before I can respond, Sayo continues. Her cheeks have been tinged a slightly red color. Our conversation earlier, about high school, since it's still about six months away, we have some time. Just give it some serious consideration. You mean about going to the same high school? Hey, don't just say that and walk ahead. I follow behind the two of them in a jog. My time with Mari has been fun, but it's surely against the providence of this world. The amount of absurd and frightening things we have encountered is probably keeping the balance. Soon this time of terror will end. And so will my time with Mari. I want to keep being with her, forever, but that wish won't be granted. If it won't be granted, at least let me engrave these feelings onto my heart. I will protect Mari, along with my steadfast vow. Big sister, you're too slow. That's not true. I'm with you. We exit the tunnel tank and head on from the Fish of the World booth. It's dark. On opening the door to the director's office, the first thing that flies out at us is darkness. It's pitch black, dark enough to swallow up even the blue light flowing out from Mari. Big sister, be careful! 
dark rooms are scary. Right. It's not just that it's dark, but there's some sort of omnis- um, omniciousness to it. Something is actively swallowing the light. The light flowing in from the door should illuminate the whole room. But it's safe to say that it isn't happening at all. I have no idea what has happened to the room, which should have been in complete disarray from the poltergeist phenomena. They're not here? Nope, they are. I can feel them. What a useless thing you've done. That voice. Saganu Mariko, I knew it! Saganu Mariko's voice came almost in sync with the answer to Sayo's question. But from where? Even as I look around, I don't see them anywhere. Kenji-kun and I, hee <laughs> hee. I'm sure you all haven't the capacity to understand. Even if we can't see her, we can clearly hear her voice. It sounds as if it's generally coming from the director's office, but I have no idea where she is. I'll tell you. The thing I realized when we met here is that I've... that I wanted you to know. Because he... loved you. Don't say nonsensical things. Please show yourself. You may not have realized it yourself, and you may have disappeared without knowing it, but within this aquarium, the yearning you felt when you were saved by him. I won't let you say that it wasn't from a heart filled with love. My Yumi, don't engage her. I know, but if we let her go at this point, I get the feeling we won't learn about Saganu Marieko and Kinji-san. Not just that. I don't think we can completely ignore Saganu Marieko. To speak of our relationship, perhaps I should start with Kinji-kun. Hiyoshi Kenji. He's a criminal who killed his mother when he was little. Ah, of course, the classic, you know, kid killing his mother scenario happens every time. That realizing it, I've forgotten to breathe. At this rate, even Mari and Sayo can't help but be interested in Saganu Marieko's story. Killed her? You mean he murdered her? I realize that my voice has completely changed. He had a sister four years younger than he. His innocent little sister accidentally swallowed a toy. He tried to make her cough it up, but it became hard for her to breathe. She was likely writhing in pain. At that point, Kinji-kun didn't save her. For someone with normal feelings, that would be unthinkable. Kinji-kun watched his sister struggle against death and was amused. So she died, like that. Discovering the scene of the crime, his mother criticized Kinji-kun. Of course she would, since if he had helped his sister sooner, she wouldn't have died. Lacking that understanding, Kinji-kun wrung his mother's neck. As he did so, he saw his mother writhe in agony like his sister had, just as he expected. Then she... Yes, she was killed by her son's hands. And he enjoyed himself doing it! <laughs> Watching his sister die. Actually killing his mother. What a monster. <laughs>